The UK fintech industry is booming, about uh, 7 billion. That's what it was worth, I believe, as of 2019. It's been one of the most successful uh, hubs for fintech uh, in Europe. And as a UK-based fin company, I'm curious your view on what makes London such an attractive spot for this industry, and do you expect it to retain its status as a fintech hub in a post-Brexit world? Well, good morning, and uh, thank you for having me. Um, it's a great question. Why did uh, fintech, you know, have such strength in the UK? Um, obviously, when we started the business almost ten years ago, fintech wasn't really a uh, term that was being used, and so we didn't think of ourselves as a fintech company. We were just starting a technology company, and I, I think a lot of the other fintechs that I know in London have a similar kind of story. And you know. Probably the reason why so many uh, fintech companies have been formed in the UK and are doing so well is because of the proximity to the city. And obviously, uh, a lot of people have experience working either in banking or in uh, consultancy. And, and so, you know, we were just building technology companies in areas that we knew. And that just led to uh, a lot of fintech companies. Mm. Now, you uh, talk about it, part of the draw being that London was already a financial center. There's a, obviously a number of the large banks are headquartered here in London. And we are seeing some interest from the large players to get involved in the payments space, uh, specifically this part of the fintech world. Uh, moving forward, how do you see the large banking players fitting in to the payment space? Are they going to take a more active role and perhaps participate in consolidation in a meaningful way? Well, it's hard for me to speculate on, you know, how the banks will respond. Obviously, you know, fintech companies have had a lot of success over the last five years or so, uh, taking on specific financial services and products. And, you know, I think one of the big differences between fintech companies and the banks is that we've taken more of a narrow focus, but broadened geographically. So for example, our footprint is across over 30 countries. Uh, we're collecting payments from, and you know, we're very much focused on within that payment space. I think in terms of you know, how the banks will respond, uh, it will be a really interesting thing to look at. Um, obviously, I would expect that there'll be increasing competition as these markets continue to grow and show strength. Uh, but I think that will come from many different angles. Uh, let's talk about your own firm. I see that for the year, um, pretty solid. I mean, it's been a pretty good year uh, for, for your company, 46% uh, growth year on year. I, I don't really want to say that you benefited from the pandemic per se, but, but certainly the shift to online has helped your business and, the, uh, and it's only been accelerated by the pandemic that transpired in, in 2020. What is the outlook going forward? And do you think you can sustain these growth rates in the future? Well, actually, I think that, you know, the, the pandemic was quite a, an interesting challenge for us. It was obviously a very uh, challenging situation for everyone. Uh, but we work with quite a wide range of businesses, all the way from small businesses in the physical world through to some of the largest technology companies in the world. And, you know, th that meant that we saw quite a mixed effect of the pandemic. So we definitely saw some negative impacts. We work with a lot of gyms, health and wellness industries, other physical world organizations where they had to shut down due to the lockdowns that we saw. And that obviously had an impact on our trading volumes. But what we saw was a counterbalance in the trends that you just talked about, M more and more of the world moving online, businesses moving their operations to digital formats. And we've definitely benefited from that. And I think that we'll continue to see those trends play out. You know, these feel more like accelerations of existing trends as opposed to completely new trends altogether. And I don't think that we'll see a reversion back to, uh, you know, the, the pre-pandemic world when it comes to those kind of trends. And so we can we expect to continue growing uh, strongly. Mm. Well, you've just completed a, another funding round. Uh, I wonder what your views are on eventually, if this is in your in your plan, uh, to IPO, but to do it via a SPAC. It's a really hot topic right now in the US, and certainly there have been a, a huge number of deals that are going through and also targeted at companies like your own. What is your view on that space, and is it something that you would look to get involved in in Europe if, if the chance came? Well, 
you know, we, we don't really think too much about specific exit milestones. You know, we think more about building a really strong, sustainable business for the long term. And so things like IPOing, you know, they would obviously be a fantastic milestone and that may well be on the cards for us one day. But I think for us, you know, it's very much the focus on how do we build the best possible business over the next three to five years and focusing very much on the strategy instead. I think when it comes to SPACs, you know, that is definitely an interesting angle. Um, you know, I think it's just lowering the, the bar for, you know, being able to IPO, not necessarily in a negative way, but just making it a smoother process and, you know, uh, making it more accessible. And I think that that would be a, an interesting trend that I would expect to see, not just in SPACs, but with other kind of uh, formats like direct listings as well. And so, you know, I think that, that that's a, can only be a good thing for the public markets in the long term.